This is the first time that Russia has been invaded by foreign troops. And I read uh, since World War II, uh, it, it says. What are you reading into this latest incursion into by, by Ukraine? I mean, this incursion is definitely historic in that sense. And uh, actually, there's been a second incursion uh, into Bransk, which is the neighboring region. It's still unconfirmed, right? It's such a rapidly developing scene. Uh, there's, it's very dynamic and new information keeps coming in. But what I'm reading into it is that it exposes the vulnerability of the Russian border. Russia and Ukraine share a border that's uh, almost 2,000 kilometers long. And basically, it shows that Russia at this point is unable to defend its border, which does make Russian President Vladimir Putin look very bad in the eyes of his domestic population, but more importantly, in the eyes of the elites. Mm. Because for them, it's like, do we have a future in this country? Do we, if we're not able to defend our borders? Uh, so that is uh, a really crucial step in uh, trying to get Russia to dissipate its forces and to concentrate them along the border as opposed to all of them being in the east of Ukraine. Mm. Uh, there's really heavy fighting happening in the east of Ukraine right now around Pokrovsk and Chasiv Yar and, uh, and in those places there's more than a hundred clashes. It's a really those are really hot spots. Yeah. And basically, it is in Ukraine's interest to, uh, to, to defuse those forces somehow and to also prevent, to disrupt the logistics, preventing them to be able to support them. For example, in Voronezh, there's an airport where uh, all of the Russian aircrafts are, and these aircrafts are shelling Ukraine every night, and they're also shelling the east of Ukraine, which is pretty much like the, the cities where the fighting is happening in the east, they're, they're no more. Yes. And so, so preventing, even disrupting those chains <laughs> would make a really big difference in this right. war. Um, you know, we're constantly seeing President Vladimir Zelensky going around the world and talking to Western allies about equipping Ukraine, about, you know, pleading for more weapons, basically. And we know that the Western allies provide these armaments, but with limited range uh, and, and a limited supply as well. And all this in an effort to try not to escalate the conflict even more. Now that with this incursion that Ukraine has done by itself, how do you think Western allies will react? Well, it is surely my hope that they will reconsider this decision exactly for those reasons, for the reasons that if Russian military supply chains get disrupted, it will allow Ukraine to get some decisive victories in the east, and it would allow to essentially stop the Russian army from capturing even more and more Ukrainian territories. Mm -hmm. So it is my hope that the, the allies will continue supporting Ukraine in terms of the air defense first and foremost, because that is something that Ukraine it needs every night um, and, and also something that Ukraine needs to, um, to gain those decisive victories yeah. in the East. Today would be day 898 of this uh, conflict and when it first started two and a half years ago, many thought this war wasn't going to last long. Either Russia would uh, take what they wanted and then leave or Ukraine would fold and Russia would take over. Why do you think it's lasted this long? Well, there's only one reason that it's lasted this long, and that's because Russia continues with it. And as long as it has the incentive to continue it, it's going to last. So as much as I would want to consider a diplomatic solution, for example, or um, there is a lot of scenarios right now being discussed about Ukraine possibly being able to swap some of the uh, occupied territories in Kursk for something else. There were, I, I saw scenarios where Ukrainians could swap the Kursk uh, nuclear power plant for the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant held by Russians. And I think those scenarios are wishful thinking. And I think they're a dangerous wishful thinking because uh, Russia has changed its constitution. So legally, uh, the territories that uh, are in Kursk and Bryansk and the territories in Donetsk, Luhansk, and all of the, the ones that are held by Russia or not even held by Russia, right? Zaporizhia is not held by Russia, not controlled by Russia, but Russia considers it part of its territory. So legally, there is no distinction between the Ukrainian territories held by Russia and the Russian. Uh, so Russia has created a fairy tale that they continue to believe in. Mm. And that is why uh, I don't think a swap like that would be possible. Uh, however, uh, I do think that that is a very important step in, uh, in the right direction.